Hey guys, Rich here at RRC Informer. Today I have a quick uh, video for you on how to set up your nose wheel steering and your rudder on separate channels. Now this applies to planes like this, the LX models F4 Phantom II, uh, a lot of the free wing models um, uh, such as the F18 Hornet and the um, uh, Stinger 90 where uh, they actually come together uh, uh, in the box with a Y harness where the nose steering is Y harnessed with the, uh, with the rudder of the airplane. That's really all you need to fly it. But uh, sometimes it's a pain when you're taxing on certain surfaces like pavement where you know, you're trimming your, 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 your rudder uh, to get your nose wheel straight. Uh, but, but then you're, you're changing your rudder deflection or you're trying to trim your rudder in flight, now you're changing your, uh, you're, you're changing your nose wheel deflection so when you land, it's, it, you're landing in a turn. So this is a real easy way using the Futaba 8J that, uh, that you can actually split them up. Um, you have to have an extra channel so you want to take the Y harness that both of these uh, are on and you want to take the Y harness out uh, and plug your rudder into your uh, rudder channel, uh, which on Futaba is number four. And you want to plug your uh, nose wheel, uh, uh, nose wheel steering, uh, into an auxiliary channel. And in this case, I'm using uh, channel eight, okay, to set this uh, thing up with. Now you notice right here, I have uh, full control of rudder and nose wheel steering. You can see they're all working in the same way, uh, in the same proper direction. But the beauty is, is now I can trim my rudder, and you can see the rudder way in the background moving, uh, but my nose wheel is not turning at all. So uh, I can go ahead and I can trim uh, only my rudder if I want to. And then with my nose wheel, if I want to trim that while I'm ground taxiing, I actually set it up for this VR knob, this center knob. And now as you can see, uh, I can turn that knob and it turns my nose wheel. It trims my nose wheel out, but it doesn't mess with my rudder as you can see up there. So. This is great because this uh, VR knob usually is uh, kind of useless in flight because it's really hard to reach it, which is good for a nose wheel steering trim uh, because uh, you can't bump it or mess with it while you're flying, hopefully. But uh, again, uh, this will allow you to trim your nose wheel. This will allow you to trim your uh, rudder. Uh, they both work in the same direction. And uh, this video is going to show you guys how to set that up uh, on your airplane. Now the first thing you want to do is separate uh, your rudder and your uh, nose wheel servos. Uh, normally they're connected to a Y harness in a lot of these jets, these EDF jets, and they go into channel 4. So you want to unplug them. Uh, again, put uh, your rudder channel uh, for your physical rudder into channel 4 or your rudder, rudder, rudder channel. And uh, in this case I'm using channel 8 for the nose wheel steering because that's the last remaining uh, channel that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and put the nose wheel steering into uh, my aux channel and again in this case it's channel 8. So now they're separated. Now that we have the rudder servo plugged into the rudder channel which is number 4 and we have the nose wheel steering servo plugged into the aux channel, aux 2 which is channel 8, we're going to go into the uh, menus here. And we're going to change around a few things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually go to, to page uh, 3 and uh, quickly we're just going to assign the uh, nose wheel steering to something. Now what we're going to want to use to to move it ultimately is going to be this VR knob for steering and you notice it doesn't um, it doesn't steer it right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to channel 8 which is where we have our nose wheel steering plugged into and we're going to assign it the VR knob instead of one of these trim switches. So as we move it to to, uh, to, to VR now we've actually assigned it to the VR knob, so as I turn this thing, uh, we now have uh, some nose wheel steering, but it's still not linked yet to the rudder. This uh, rudder stick is uh, right now only moving just the rudder, um, and we need to link them together now. So we back out of that menu, we're going to go over to uh, Programmable uh, mix, uh, Mixing Menu, and we're just going to select one, number one, because we're going to make a programmable mix. Um, and once we get in here, what we're going to do is we're going to assign, and I had already put these in here, so I'm actually going to clear these out so you can see what this looks like. Uh, the mix is inhibited, trims off, some switches are selected, and the most important thing we're going to do first before we do anything is go to master and assign it rudder, and we use our plus and minus keys for that. And then our slave channel is going to be aux 2, channel 8, which is our nose wheel steering. So again, we go down there, use our plus and minus keys, and select those. So the master is rudder. Slave is aux 2 or channel 8 for our uh, nose wheel steering. Once we've done that, now it's safe to actually activate the mix. So we go up here to the mix 
and instead of inhibiting it, we're going to activate it and turn it on. Uh, the trim, we're actually going to put that off, okay, uh, and make sure it stays off. Um, the reason we don't want uh, trim activated is because if I move my rudder trim, it will also turn my nose wheel steering, which I, I, I don't want it to, to turn that. I only want this trim running uh, uh, or trimming just the physical rudder. Uh, then we're going to go down to switch, assign a switch to this function, which doesn't really matter because we're going to leave it on null anyway, but switch F is the training switch, which spring loads off. Uh, and we don't want to assign a switch because if I flip the switch, then it would turn your nose wheel steering off, which you really don't ever want to do. So, uh, and then the switch position is either on, up, down, or, or, or null. So we're just going to leave that in at, at null. So there's no switch that will actually shut our nose wheel steering off. Uh, now, once this is all done, um, we now have to get our nose wheel steering, our nose wheel linked with our rudder control. And the way that we do that is we just go right up here to where it says rate. And you notice as I move this left and right, it actually highlights left for left and right for right. So we have to highlight the correct one. And I'm going to show you exactly how this works. I'm going to go left rudder first, left turn. And I had already done this on mine, so I kind of know where it goes. You may have to go plus, as you can see here, or you may have to go minus, depending on which way yours is uh, set up. So. Um, what I'm going to do is go plus 9, you can see the nose wheel is actually turning right now. I'm going to go all the way up to 90%. Uh, you may need to go to 50% or 70% or 100%, depending on how much travel you want. So now I've linked my nose wheel steering servo to my rudder for left turning only. For right turning, it's not set up yet, but you notice it highlighted the lower block. So I already know that that's plus 90 because I already fooled with this. As I hold that button down, look at my nose wheel uh, turning uh, to the right. I'm going to bring it all the way up to 90%. Again, depending on how much travel you want, you can set this up for personal preference. Now I have steering in the proper direction and everything uh, works uh, really nicely. Now, a couple of the snags you might run into. I'm going to go ahead and back out of here and show you a couple things. You notice now our mix is set up. Rudder is the master. Aux 2 uh, is the slave channel. So uh, rudder is channel 4. AUX2 is channel 8. As we know, channel 8 is actually hooked up to our nose wheel steering. So I'm going to back off, back off on out of here. And uh, a couple things we may have to uh, mess with, and I had to do this on mine, but uh, I noticed that as I moved my stick, my nose wheel, uh, actually for whatever reason, my nose wheel or my VR trim, I don't remember which one, wasn't moving, in the, wasn't moving the nose wheel in the right direction. So you may have to actually reverse your, uh, your nose wheel steering channel, okay? Because uh, we already know our rudder's working in the right direction, our physical rudder in the back of the airplane, so we may need to reverse this, and I did have to reverse that channel, and that's what gave me uh, the proper steering. So uh, it's real important to, to, to just remember that reverse might throw you off. You're, you may be steering right with your rudder, but your nose wheel may be going left. It's a combination of the reverse function uh, and the plus or minus menu that is uh, plus or minus uh, settings uh, that are actually all the way back here at the programmable mixing, the rate plus or minus. So you have to fool with those to get it correct depending on your airplane. Now, the other thing you're going to have to mess with probably too is your sub trim. And you'll see here as I go into the sub trim, all I'm going to have to mess with really is my rudder, okay, which is channel four, to get that trimmed and neutralized for your physical rudder in the back of the airplane. And then uh, your nose wheel steering. So to get your nose wheel steering really set up correctly, the best thing to do is to set your VR knob. You notice now my VR knob still works as a trim, like we saw in the beginning. It's still turning my nose wheel. Um, and, uh, and as I move my rudder, it also works to steer the airplane. And as I move my physical rudder trim, it no, no longer affects my, uh, my nose wheel. So um, it's, uh, it's really nice how this all functions. So, but to set up your nose wheel uh, steering and to get it all centralized, just get your VR knob right there in the middle, okay? And then physically look down the center line of the airplane and look at it from underneath. And uh, when you scroll all the way down here to aux, uh, uh, to your aux uh, two or your channel eight, uh, you now can press plus or minus and that will actually trim your nose wheel, which is actually what it's doing right now. I have mine on 52. Uh, you just have to trim that so it's as close to the center as you can and uh, with mine at 52, my nose wheel is straight down the center. My knob is right in the center. And the beauty of that is, is now as I move my knob, 
uh, I should have an equal amount of right trim and an equal amount of left trim. If, if you don't have your knob in the center when you adjust this trim, you may have an unequal amount of steering to either side. So you set it up that way. All right, guys, let's take uh, a final look at our, our, our end result of all this programming. Uh, again, you can see that we've uh, achieved right steering and left steering. That gives us both um, rudder control back here, gives us nose wheel steering control, and we have independent trims. So now we can trim our rudder, which you can see moving back here, without moving our nose wheel. You can see I'll trim it back. The nose wheel doesn't move, only the rudder. And our, uh, our nose wheel steering knob here just turns our nose wheel and doesn't affect our rudder at all in the back. So real easy to program. Again, this is applicable to any airplane that has a separate rudder, a physical rudder, and a separate uh, nose wheel steering. Uh, and they're linked on a Y harness. Now the factories do this just to keep it a little less expensive. You can mechanically set it up this way. But especially when you have a jet like this, you're handling it on, uh, on um, uh, pavement. Uh, it just makes uh, steering it uh, so much easier to be able to trim it with just this knob without affecting your, uh, your rudder. And then, of course, you can trim your rudder in flight without affecting your nose wheel steering when you land. Um, and really quick, guys, just to summarize and go into the menus again, um, the only things you're going to really have to mess with are a programmable mixer, which you're going to make uh, the rudder, the master, and the, uh, the nose wheel steering, which is channel 8, the slave. And you can see here, master is the rudder, slave is aux 2. Then you activate your mix. Uh, you leave the trim off because you don't want your uh, rudder trim to trim that. Uh, position, switch position is null. Any switch doesn't matter, but you're going to want that off. Adjust these plus or minus how you need to, okay, to make sure that everything's turned in the right way. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, your auxiliary channel, like we talked about, you're going to assign channel 8 for your nose wheel steering to be whatever knob or button or switch that you want uh, to, to, to trim your nose wheel. In this case, it's the, uh, the VR knob. And then the only other two places that we're going to go is on the first page here uh, where we may have to reverse a channel, possibly four or eight. And mostly it's, uh, it's eight, the aux channel that we might need to. And then, of course, um, we go into our uh, sub trim menu here. And uh, again, uh, you may have to adjust just your rudder. You can do that independently or your nose wheel steering. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, that about sums it up. I hope you guys found this uh, video uh, useful. Uh, I sure have, and it really helps, uh, again, in setting up any airplane with independent uh, rudder and nose wheel steering trim, um, but they still operate on the same channel. It's just such a great way to fly. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for checking out this video once again. Thanks for checking out RCM4, and as always, guys, we'll see you next time.